Do you like actors like Timothy Chalamet or Michael Cera? If you do, then uh, go watch another interview because today we're talking to somebody very different. Once again, I'm John Klein, the lead director for Get the Picks Productions for an independent film production company here in Ohio. Today, we're going to be talking to a man named Michael Broderick. We're going to talk to him about his experience on a lot of different shows like True Detective, Terminal List, Quantum Leap, New Amsterdam, the list goes on and on. We're going to ask him a little bit about his experience in acting and working with other actors like uh, Chris Pratt, Zachary Levy, and Mahershala Ali. So, enjoy conversation with Michael Broderick. Welcome to the show, sir. Welcome to the... It's not really a show. Welcome to the interview, I guess. How you doing? Jonathan, thanks so much for having me here. I'm, I'm great today, man. Just uh, enjoying a beautiful day in Nashville, Tennessee. First question, just to get answered. Uh, any relation to Matthew Broderick? No, Matthew is of the uh, Chicago Broderick. So I'm of the uh, Jersey City Broderick's. So, so you're, you're saying there's a chance. There's a slight possibility. <laughs> right, okay. yeah. Me, so, we're like this. When I would go into an audition before any casting directors you know, knew me at all, they'd, they'd be like, uh, oh, are you related to Matthew? And I'm like, does it help or hurt? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, big fan. So you both went into similar things, though. So in that way, you are uh, related. Um, but um, what, what originally piqued your, your interest into um, pursuing acting? Well, I think, I think just because uh, I, was, I was always starved for attention, I think. As a, as a young boy, I had, uh, there were four kids originally in my family. We had, uh, my oldest brother who was, you know, the first, so he was the prince. Then there was my sister who was the only girl. Then there was me. And then there was my baby brother who was the baby. So I like, I had nothing. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't even the middle child, you know, you know, so, so I think I just always felt the need to, to garner attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I spent a lot of time escaping into, you know, books, comics, uh, television shows, movies, especially Star Wars, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I mean, Harrison Ford was like my hero the whole time yeah. I was growing up, you know, first Han Solo, then Indiana Jones, then Jack Ryan. I mean, you know, whatever, you know, it would make me feel better when I was feeling low. It would make me experience emotion, you know. Uh, that's when I really wanted to pursue the craft of acting. To, to have a part in, in telling those stories that can lift people up or, or even just make them feel something different when they need it. Once you knew, hey, I'm interested, I like people's attention, and I like telling them stories, how did you start the path of like, okay, let me do that in a good way? I came up in this little town in Spring Lake, New Jersey, this little town, uh, on the beach, and they had a great community theater there. And part of their, their first theater workshop class there, and that still exists today. Uh, it's been going for you know, 40 something years now. We would do dance and music and, and acting. And I would go over and work out the, the theater workshop. And then every summer we'd do a show. And so I got some training there and then uh, joined the Marine Corps. So I kind of stepped away for a while. So I got a late start acting. I was in my mid thirties by the time I went to Los Angeles to, to pursue it. And I studied with uh, Vincent Chase, who uh, not the entourage character, but probably who the entourage character was named after. Vincent Chase is like a legendary acting coach in, in Los Angeles. All the, the James Cameron people came out of his class. He was very oh, hot okay. in the 80s, like uh, Bill Paxton and Michael Bean. And yeah, yeah. Morgan Shepard uh, was a British actor, studied with Royal Shakespeare Company. He was a teacher there. Um, he passed away a couple of years ago, sadly. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they were great teachers, just kind of really got down to the, the organic vibe of acting it wasn't about the method yeah i think looking back now that i know more about meisner i think it was more of a meisner approach okay but uh vince was great he'd just sit behind his desk and you know say yeah you, you did this wrong blah 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 you need to analyze the subtext more and this and the other thing and he kind of you know really taught us the uh the essentials the building blocks that's helpful to be able to know who just says the best actor that you've gotten to work with just personally working with them not necessarily best performance well you know you mentioned Mahershal Ali uh, in the intro and um, he was certainly the most uh, uh, has the most accolades that I've worked mm -hmm. with He's a two-time Academy Award winner yeah uh, and just a hugely talented actor um, and I really enjoyed working with him it, you know we worked together I was I was in four episodes of True Detective so I got to spend some you know a substantial amount of time with them and all my stuff was with Mahershala and Steven, the two leads. Nice. Um, so uh, I got to observe him as a, as a leader on set, you mm -hmm. know? And um, 
and he was in it you know he, he didn't he didn't take anything for granted yeah. took his uh number one on the call sheet very seriously uh he was uh collaborative if something wasn't working for some reason he he'd cast it out to all you know i didn't have half the resume that you know somebody like stephen dorfer or Herschel would do but but it's uh he was always willing to hear everybody's everybody's input and then he'd kind of you know yeah it sounds good or whatever let's let's do that let's try that you know that's that's the thing he was always willing to try things i enjoyed working with him a lot would you jump at the chance of being able to work with somebody that you felt was going to probably be a terrible co-worker but might give out a good performance i'm not you know i'm not like a, a household name so if there's like let's say a notoriously difficult actor right mm-hmm. But he's working on Quentin Tarantino's final film, and I have a chance to go in and work with him. Yeah, because that's good for my profile. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that'll raise me up. It's always what does this role offer me? Yeah. Not just as a creative, but for my career. I still yeah. always got to be thinking about that. You know, because yeah. like I said, I'm not a household name. So if it's something that's going to raise my profile, yeah, I'll do it. Even if I only get a couple lines. You know, if somebody's difficult to work with. You know, I was in the Marines for Pete's sake. People yelled at you all the time. So what, what, what an actor's going to yell at me? Oh, no. You know what I mean? <laughs> or a difficult director? Huh? They can't send me back to boot camp. You know? <laughs> so... That's good. No, it's good. That's a good approach. So not not a lot of crossover, I would think, from theater to um, to uh, the service. I actually started my career working for a military advisory company where we go in, we do special ability stuff on shows or yeah. and look military. You know, but you can put a uniform on anybody, but half the time you're like that guy's. Yeah, you know, he's got his hat, hat, his cover kicked back like this. Or he's got his hands in his pockets. You know, and you're like that guy ain't in the military. <laughs> Um, or he doesn't know how to hold a weapon. Doesn't know how to hold a weapon. You know, whatever. <laughs> Any time I'm on set with with other veterans is is a great time. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people say it, and I agree. Film set runs a lot like the military. Interesting. You know, you've got your commanding officer as a director. You know, and even he's got his chain of command. Yeah. And everybody's got their job, their specialty, and and it and I appreciate it uh, because it feels like I feel at home. You know. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. I played a lot of guys carrying guns, you know, and it was just because I've been trained. You don't got you don't got to spend the extra time it takes to train somebody, you know. I think uh, I I booked a, a lot of those roles, especially early on, yeah, because of the way I carry myself. When I walk into a room, they see it, you know. And yeah. back in the days before self taping, and when you you'd actually go in person to an audition, yeah. you know, you'd be in the waiting room and. And I'd be outside the door and you hear the guys doing the lines and stuff. And, and I'm not to slag anybody or anything like that, but no, please. It's more entertaining. They're putting it on. You know what I mean? Like they're like, Oh, I have to act military now. And they use the voice and they, you know, they're like they're all doing Arlie army impressions, you know, or whatever for, for young actors. If you got to play a military role or law enforcement officer, you don't got to put anything on. It's it's literally just it's it's you, but you have a different job. Mm. You're just a regular person. You ju- you just have a very specific job. Remember that, and you're gonna you're gonna do much better than trying to put on some kind of persona of you know I'm in the military, you yeah. know whatever. So just my little advice to you. No, I think that's great. I think that's great too. And you can sometimes I think see it in performances because you can tell that it's like this is a guy who's trying to seem tougher than he is, so he's not confident that he naturally comes off as tough. At least what I've seen from a lot of the actors that that are have some military background and military understanding, they have a bit of this calmness and they're just I don't know, they seem like they're really listening in scenes too that I I don't know. I like seeing that. But you also mentioned I saw in uh some of your past that you've done um correct me if I'm wrong, but you were almost like pigeonholed as like a this is a Jimmy Stewart type. Uh, he may have served, I can't remember, but I, I don't necessarily see the crossover between those types. You know what I mean? So talk to me a little bit about that. Why why was that, do you think? It wasn't that I was pigeonholed as a Jimmy Stewart type. It was it was when I was first studying uh, at Vincent Chase Workshop. Mm-hmm. And both he and Morgan Shepard always used to throw out people like, you know, you're a Jimmy Stewart type. You're a, a, Morgan used to lean more towards Gary Cooper, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think more, it wasn't necessarily that I was like Jimmy Stewart, but it was like, I think they saw perhaps this kind of classic uh, leading man yeah, yeah. quality. I think maybe because I was more often than not relaxed. Uh, but I enjoyed that because, you know, in class before I started working and just getting all those uh, 
uh, authority figure roles, you know, military yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. I enjoyed the playing the more vulnerable stuff. Yeah. I still be a veteran. And sometimes I recently I was on New Amsterdam. I played a veteran who was, um, his, his mother had passed away while he was overseas yep. and he comes home to find out that his, his uh, house had been, uh, you know, his mother's house had been taken by the hospital. She had gifted it to them. He's a, he's a hard man who does difficult things. But it was a time when he was really vulnerable, and I really relished that opportunity to um, to to play that. It's a it's a cool scene. I think that it works out well for who you are too. That it's like, well, you're actually kind of you can really legitimately bring this point home. Oh, I appreciate that, and and and, and I look forward to being able to play more uh, kind of more vulnerable roles. Yeah. You know? Being a you know, I'm a dad. I'm a husband. Yeah. You know, all all the same things. You know, so many other guys, and, and to be able to kind of uh, explore those those situations and emotions on display for other people that yeah. they can relate to. That's what kind of gets my you know gears going. You know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Those are the things that connect with people as well. And worst actor you've ever worked with? If you don't want to say names, you don't have to say names. But <laughs> no, no, nice. you know, I've been blessed to have worked with some so many talented people. Look, I mean, when you when you get to a point where you're working, you know, I I had to jump right into 24. You know, that was my first job. So when you're when you're hitting at that level, you've already been screened. You know, <laughs> like you've, mm. I haven't worked professionally with with uh, any bad actors. However, you know, look, I'll say, you know, up until I left Los Angeles, I was working. Yeah. I was still in class every week just to stay sharp. And you get new actors. I wouldn't call them bad actors. They're just new actors. Call they them don't, bad actors. They don't have any. <laughs> It'll make this more fun. <laughs> they don't have any craft yet. You know, they're right. they're. they're you know, they, they've got some charisma. They can string some words together without, you know, falling on their face. And, and look, that's the way I was when I started, you know. I'm not awful looking. Or if you're really <laughs> awful looking, you're more prone to get work. There's a couple of uh, things you need to hit. You need to be able to talk. <laughs> you yeah. need to be able to <laughs> have people look at you without barfing. And, um, <laughs> and but, you know, but, but then you got to learn the craft. And that, you know, I'm still learning the craft. I've been doing this almost 20 years now. Yeah, you you got to know that's the case because I think a lot of people are like, ah, oh, the first one didn't go that well. I guess it's not for me. And it's like, okay, well, it's not for you if that's how you think about it, right? <laughs> exactly right. It's, uh, you know, look, I've been very fortunate. Um, I have, my wife, 20, it'll be 23 years in May. Oh, nice. Uh, so she's been with me through this entire journey. You know, when I, want, when I decided that, that in my mid-30s, I wanted to drop everything, have her quit her job in New York and move to Los Angeles with our 18-month-old son so I could try to be an actor. Uh, so I've been very fortunate to have a, just a steadfast partner who believes in me. Because things go up and down. They go up and down all the time. And, you know, you're top of the world. And you think, wow, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm true detective. I'm a recurring character. Man, the sky's the limit now. Yeah. And then, you know, all of a sudden, well, you don't get anything for a while. You know, yeah. oh, now I'm back on this TV show or whatever. And, and, you know, and it's up and downs, up and downs. You're always second guessing yourself. But if you got somebody next to you telling you, know, hey, you know, keep on, you know, just to be your North Star, you, you uh, it makes it easier. It makes it easier to hang in there. So I don't blame people that duck out. You no, know, they're all alone. No, that's that 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 uh, that makes sense. What is your process? You're there on set. How do you prepare for that day? I immediately start clocking all those things away that that are are that are like me. I look for things that are like me, mm. and the things I instantly recognize and can uh, can empathize with. Then to make it interesting, so you're not always playing yourself, you. Start to find what uh, Morgan Shepard, my old teacher, used to call the cracks in the cup, right? You find the little cracks in the cup, the little imperfections or the little tweaks on the way you think mm. that this person, you know, created by these situations yeah. might think or might believe or might act. It wasn't not from the beginning, but over the years, I've come up with this kind of thing that's been helpful to think about this person's hands, right? What is, what is this person's hands like? Do his hands ache because of stress or because of, you know, he's constantly doing this or whatever. Um, are his hands rough? Are they smooth? Is he a cultured person? How does he eat? Like, you know, how uh -huh. is he at dinner? Does he eat yeah. over the sink? You know, because his job's everything and he doesn't have time for this. He's just feeding the machine. Right. Or is it somebody that sits down for a nice meal and he knows exactly where his, you know, which, which uh, fork to use and whatever for the salad, you know. Um, I think hands are important, and hands can really inform your character. So that, for me, is a way in. 
So yeah, first similarities, then differences, and then physicality. That's great. No, that's that's very helpful. H- how do you keep from leaning into those things too much? So, for instance, let me give you an example. You know, this guy's very different from me. Family's not important to him at all, right? It's, it, you're And you're playing mm-hmm. this role. Is that at all a challenge to you? The things that you know the character doesn't care about? I know, that's a little bit of an out there question. It's something I'm curious about. <laughs> no, no, I'd like to explore that though. How do I avoid that? Interesting. I had a, I had a, an audition recently, if I can, maybe this will help. Yeah. I had an audition recently, which was, it was outside of what I typically get asked to read for. Cool. Well, yeah, it's cool, but it's also, it's, it's challenging. Right. Very right. challenging yeah. because all my instincts, you know, when I was, when I was first exploring it, all my instincts seemed to be wrong. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and so I, I really just I focused on the text and I focused on the 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 emotion of the scene and and the intent of you know of yeah. what I wanted to express to this person. So where in the craft do you feel the fulfillment with the character that you've built? It's in the moment. It's mm-hmm. it's locking eyeballs with and trading impulses with that other actor. Oh, cool. It's when the cameras go away. Stanislavski called it public solitude. <laughs> Right. Oh, that's cool. He was talking about the the stage, but you're in public, you're in front of people, but you're, you're by yourself, meaning that you have to be as if you're, you're alone and act naturally as you would alone. Those are the moments when, when I'm trading stuff with, you know, say Mahershala Ali or, or, you know, even Chris Pratt, we did a scene together in, in Terminalist. It's when you're in it, man. And everything else goes away it's just that that interaction uh that's what the payoff is for me yeah um and it always makes you feel good because you know i always wanted people to look at me so yeah 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 (laughs) it's thrilling how do i enjoy saying other people's words i just do it's um you know it's like singing a song or bernie Taupin, right nelton john bernie Taupin write the write the the songs and but elton yeah was the one who brought them to life right Yeah, yeah um you're a different kind of creative. Yeah. Right now, I, I love just just performing it, man. I don't care whose words they are. No. Uh, yeah. Although, if the next bit of words I get to say are Quentin Tarantino's, I'd, I'd love that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be bad, right? Tarantino calls you, but he asks you to do the thing that you don't want to do in film. What what's your what's your thoughts on it? My manager, after we had been working together a couple of years, and I started to work, you know, steadily. Um, uh, he just sent me an email. I said, Hey, what, what are you willing to do? What are you not willing to do? You know, nudity, sex, things, this, that, blah, 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 blah. And I, I basically wrote it out. I said, you know, uh, for, for indie film, whatever, I won't do this, 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 this. And and I wrote down, it would take, you know, yes, but it would take a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) And then I think the highest level was like, if Mr. Scorsese asked nicely, (laughs) you know, uh, so, so, you know, for, for somebody like, you know, Martin Scorsese, Quentin Tarantino, Spielberg, yeah. you know, yeah. You know, what, what am I going to say? No. Uh, <laughs> however, you know, uh, there's some things that I shy away from, to be honest, it, it, back, uh, several years ago, some smaller things were offered me where it was, it just made, it made the military look bad, like yeah. systemically bad. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? As yeah. opposed to like. As opposed to like uh, one guy does something bad, but the rest of the military knows that that's wrong and you shouldn't do that. You know, right, right, right. Look, military is full of screw ups, just like the rest of the world's full of screw ups. You know what I mean? Right. So, so they're just regular people. No, I think that's helpful. I mean, I don't want to be a part of that. You know, there's 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 certain messages that if you're like, this is not helpful. This is not helpful storytelling. It's not accurate too, based right. on the information you have. You don't want to be part of that. It's not a story that you want to then help be part of, be one of the players that's saying those words. So I think that's that's huge. Any projects that you've worked on that you personally feel the most passionate about? It would have to be Fathers and Sons. I'm very proud of the film too. If folks want to look for it, look for, uh, look for Fathers and Sons, a terminal yeah. list story. You got the, uh, you got the uh, uh, poster behind you, right? Can you see that? There yeah. it is, right up there. Yeah, great. Yeah, very proud of it. And um, and it and it got me a role on uh, on the terminal list with Chris Pratt, which was wow. nice. It was kind of an unsolicited uh, audition piece. 
<laughs> That's awesome. It had a very specific mission, and the mission was to get involved with the terminal list. And it was being cast by people who I hadn't worked with before, so they weren't aware of me. Um, and uh, yeah, I created this short film. We shot it during lockdown, shot it in a day. Uh, yeah, I got some of my very talented friends, many of them veterans. It's directed by an Army veteran, written by a Navy veteran. The co-star with me is an Army veteran. Um, and there were other veterans involved doing sound, doing music. I found a way to get it to production. I actually sent it to Jack Carr, the author of Terminal List, mm. and he sent it to production, and production loved it. And so I think they were pretty far along in casting already, so they kind of found this role. They created this little role for me as Rick the Bartender, you know, and snuck me into one of the episodes, you know. <laughs> uh, but they, they really enjoyed the film. The, the, the showrunner came up to me after, you know, while I was on set, he's like, hey, man, I love the film. Chris Pratt was very kind to say some nice things about it to me, and um, yeah, where'd it gotten around? So that was a passion thing because I really wanted to be a part of that project. And I was fortunate to, uh, to have some very talented friends who helped me, uh, make that happen. Yeah. That's definitely something that people should be able to check out. Hopefully we can throw some clips on the screen right here so people can get a little taste of it as well. Yeah. Last thing that I want to make sure we handle yeah. before we, before we head out of here, I have a little thing, a little kind of practice run of, of acting that we can do and kind of show your skills. We're going to show my skills. Okay. Let me uh, stretch. No, uh, you know, something I do want to say before we, we get out is uh, yeah. I moved to Nashville a year ago from Los Angeles. Uh, we're here in just about a year, just over a year, right? And um, I want to start working out acting wise again. Yeah. And I, I thought I also might want to start sharing some of, some of my experience with people, with other veterans. So if uh, you're a veteran in the Nashville area and acting something you're interested in, and reach out to me. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm a lonely actor in Nashville now. You talked about that. There was public solitude, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay, great. I didn't write this. This isn't my work. Um, I, touched, I punched it up a little bit. It's in the style of a procedural drama. Um, but today I want to see you playing that, that Jimmy Stewart type. Are you okay with that? You want, so you want some Jimmy Stewart? All right, I don't, I don't know if I have Jimmy Stewart in my back pocket, but I'll give it a shot. All right, well, let's... let's yeah, man, okay. Yeah, yeah, let, let's, let's do All this. Right. I'll set the scene. Interior apartment hallway. Mr. Stewart, uh, we've received multiple complaints from your neighbors about strange noises coming from your apartment. Care to explain? Uh, oh, I apologize, officer. It's, it's just my, my miniature horse, Clementine. She's a bit nervous, so, so I keep her indoors. A horse?! You can't keep a horse in an apartment. It's illegal. This is New York City. We have standards here. Uh, I'm sorry. I I, I, I didn't know that. Uh, I rescued her from a farm. I, I didn't have anywhere else to keep her. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse, Mr. Stewart. You need to take responsibility for your actions. Uh, of course, officer. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. This isn't just a minor inconvenience, Mr. Stewart. Keeping a horse in your apartment is a serious violation of the law. Miniature horses are a threat to a functioning society. Their kind isn't welcome on my beat. Well, well, well I, I won't let this happen again. I'll just have to figure out a way to pay for a better place for Clementine, but, but how? That's not my problem, that's yours. An undiscovered young man named Jimmy Stewart. After the police officer leaves, Jimmy sits down on his couch, deep in thought. He's been feeling lost lately, unsure of what to do with his life. Suddenly, inspiration strikes him. He remembers a script he read years ago, one that touched his heart and stayed with him ever since. It's a wonderful life. That's it. He jumps up and grabs the script, flipping through the pages excitedly. This is it. He knows what he has to do. I have to do this. I have to go back to acting. Takes a deep breath and smile. It's time to bring some joy back into the world. Clementine, the miniature horse, kicks with excitement. Yay. Clementine, I didn't know you could talk. <laughs> so, um, it's sort of an origin story, I think. It's a young origin story for It's a Wonderful Life is what I'm getting out of this. Um, Very nice. But great work on your part, dude. That's not bad, Jimmy Stewart. That's pretty good. I think there was maybe some uh, uh, Woody Allen in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to go into Matthew Broderick. Oh, boy. <laughs> Great. All right. So thank you again for well, hopping on today. Guys. Thank you for your service. Um, and then thanks for, for also trying to bring that towards the arts because, honestly, I think that's 
it's more important than I think a lot of people give her credit. And I think it, that's, that's a great place for a lot of great men to be going towards. So thank you. Appreciate you. I, I really enjoyed uh, talking with you, Jonathan. And, uh, I hope, uh, I hope at least part of it was kind of coherent. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Project, thank you again for coming on today. Uh, check out Fathers and Sons. Go follow him on social media, too. Follow along with this guy's career. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a lot. I know I did, and I think it's going to really inform a lot of the writing that we're doing for our next film. Thanks, guys. See you next time.